Hello, so this video is going to be a bit related to the previous tutorial that I did where I designed a squid house as I wanted to expand a bit on part of the process of using a shadow pass from a 3D blocking in Blender to use as a base in Photoshop to get really nice uh, shadows in an illustration. I'll walk you through the whole process in this video of setting up the lighting and the shadows, getting it into Photoshop and a few methods for using it in your drawing. Um, if you're already quite used to working in Blender, you probably know a lot of this process already, but hopefully there's still going to be a tip or two that you can use along the way. But let's jump into it. Okay, so here we have the 3D model inside of Blender. So the first thing that we want to do is to create a separate viewport so we can preview how the shadows are going to look like from the camera's perspective. So the way to create a new viewport is to go to a corner where you want the viewport to be, and then you see this little crosshair icon coming up and you click and you drag and it's going to create a new section of the interface for you and up here in the left corner you can choose what's going to be in this viewport and we just want the 3D viewport so that's great and you can then press 0 on your numpad to go into the camera view and to be able to see the shadows in the scene we need to go into the render view so which we will do by pressing this right hand circle up here and we also want to make sure that we're in the Cycles Render Engine for this, which is down here in the Render Properties tab, and Render Engine, and you choose Cycles. Uh, this is to get a more precise render. So now the scene is completely dark because I've put a black background color for the environment. This is not something you need to do, as the shadow path that we are going to render out is going to ignore the environmental lighting and, uh, and only show shadows based on the lights that you put in the scene. This is just to see it a bit clearer. So now obviously the scene is completely dark because we have no lights enabled in the scene. So we're going to put one in by pressing Shift A, going to light and clicking sun. So here we're going to get a sunlight in the scene that we can then move around. And it doesn't matter where you put it as it's just a directional light. So it only matters how you rotate it. So we can rotate it here and you can already see in the render preview how the shadows are falling. Uh, we can try to rotate it in different angles to get some shadow shapes that we like. But you can play around with it until you, you find something that you're happy with. So when you've roughly placed your light as you want it to be, then it's time to preview the shadows. And to do that, we need to enable the shadow pass. So the way to do that is to go to this tab in the right side that's called Layer Properties. And this is where you choose all the render passes that Blender is going to calculate. And by default, it's only going to include a couple of them. But the one that we want to focus on here is the shadow one. So if you scroll down under light and go all the way down here to shadow, make sure that this is enabled. And now you can preview this shadow pass by going to this little arrow up here. Under render pass, you click the bar and then you find shadow and then click it. And here you're going to see a preview of the actual shadow pass that we're going to be rendering out. And to see it a bit clearly, we can disable the grids and all the icons, which you do by clicking this icon with the two little circles up here. So here's how the shadow pass is going to look like, and you can keep playing around with the light if you want to do some adjustments. Keep in mind that these shapes are just going to be a starting point for us to use in Photoshop, and we are going to be able to edit them later on. So just do your best guess, and, and you can always render out another one. So there might be better ways to render the pass out of Blender, but I'm going to show you the way that I've been doing it, and it's been working fine for me. So first of all, we can disable any other render passes that we don't need uh, to make the render a bit lighter. It's not super important, but you can do it if you want. So I'll leave on just shadow and combined. But just before we render, we're going to set how many samples that we want for the render. And just for the shadow pass, you don't need a lot of samples to get a nice and crisp shadow. Uh, so here I've just set it to 128, which should be plenty. Uh, if you have uh, very, very few, you might start to see a bit of noise in your shadows. Uh, so it's better to have it a little bit high if you can, but it's not that important. So let's try and hit F12 to do the render. And boom, here we have the final render. And to preview the shadow pass, we can again go up here in the right corner and click Combine and change it to Shadow. And we're going to see our shadow pass, which looks pretty decent. Yeah, this is more than enough to get started in Photoshop, I think. So now we're going to save out the render. So we go up to Image here in the left corner, click Save As and we can just use a PNG, that's fine. And I usually change the compression down to zero just to have a completely clean image. And we'll just call it shadow one and save the PNG. If you have multiple passes that you are rendering out and you don't want to go through and save each image individually every time that you need to do a re-render, there's a bit more efficient way to do it, which I usually do for all my renders, uh, which is saving the image as an EXR multi-layer format. Uh, and I'll just show quickly how to open that in Photoshop. So first we save it 
out again, we go to image, save as, and then instead of PNG, we will choose open EXR multilayer. And I'll just call that shadow one EXR, and these settings are fine, and I'll save that. By default, Photoshop doesn't really handle multilayer EXR files, so we're gonna have to download a plugin for Photoshop to be able to open these type of files. So the one that I've been using that works really, really amazing is called EXRIO. And you can see the address here to find it. It's called exr-io.com and you can just download the program here. After that's downloaded and installed, we can then try to open our EXR in Photoshop. So now I can basically just drag in the EXR to Photoshop and it's gonna pop up this uh, dialog window that I'm just gonna press open. And then you're gonna see it's gonna open up the render file with, with all the individual passes that you've clicked inside of Blender on its own layer. So in this example, I've just enabled a couple different layers so you can see what it renders out. And here on the bottom, we have our shadow pass as well. So here is the main file that I want to put my shadows on. So I'm gonna copy paste my shadow pass into this file and put it between the line art and the color. But when I paste it in, you're gonna see that it doesn't really match up exactly. And this is because the file that I'm working in is not the same dimensions as the render is and I've been moving my image around and expand in the canvas so the render doesn't know exactly where to go to match this. So the way to fix that in this case uh, is to go to my initial 3D plug out that I used as a base for this whole painting. Uh, because this one I've also transformed alongside uh, the rest of the work. So actually Photoshop saves these transformations on it. So I can go Control T to transform it and I can see up here in the left side how it's been transformed and how it's been scaled. Uh, in this case it stayed at 100% scale, so that's fine. So what I want to grab is these transform values and then paste them onto the shadow pass to get it to match up. If you don't have a 3D base layer like this to do this with, that's totally fine and you can just eyeball it and match it up the best you can by hand, which is totally fine as well, it just takes a little extra time. Uh, but from here I'm gonna copy this value, the first one, and I'm gonna go to my shadow pass, transform, and paste it in there. And I'm gonna do the same for the Y value, copy that, go to the shadow pass, control T, and paste that in. So now it should match exactly over the other renders, and we can change the opacity here to see that it fits nicely, and then we can re-enable the color and the line. So we're just gonna zoom in a bit here so we can see what's going on. So now with the line art on top, we can get a feeling of how these shadows are gonna work in the piece. And it looks very messy at this stage because uh, it's based on the raw 3D where you can really see all the polygons and also the design has changed from the 3D. So some of the shapes are very different in the actual design. So that's what we're gonna have to edit afterwards. But for now, we want to overlay these shadows over the color and get rid of all the white in the scene. And to do that, I've grouped all of my color layers together in one folder. Here it's called color. And then I'm gonna create a clipping mask with the shadow pass to that folder. So basically what that is, is you have your shadow pass layer and you hold down alt in between the folder and the shadow pass and you click, left click on that. So then it's gonna make sure that this layer only affects what's in that folder that it's clipped to. So now we obviously want to get rid of all this white to just have the pure black shadows and to do that we will just simply put it on a multiply layer mode which gives us only the complete dark shadows and from here you can then paint with a completely black value to add shadow and paint with a completely white value to remove shadow and now it's just a matter of going in and removing shadows from the surfaces you don't want to and just cleaning it up all over the scene and when you want to switch between black and white uh, you can press X on your keyboard which will switch between the foreground and the background color so you can have two different colors that you switch between so you don't always have to go back and change the color so this way you can have a very quick workflow to add and erase shadows this method however only works best if you want these completely pure uh, shadows or any shadow effect that works on a multiply layer and the layer has to stay on multiply for this to work. So that's actually another way to do this that I will show you that gives a few more options in how you want to use these shadows in your piece. So what I'm going to do is just hide the shadow layer for a second and then I'll create a new layer that's also clipped to the color folder and I'm just going to fill this layer with a black color. Then I'm going to take my shadow pass layer and I'm just going to move it 
on top of the whole file and put it back on normal. Because what I want to do is to use the black parts as a mask for the black color. This process might seem a little bit tricky, but just know that in most cases, the other way with having the layer on multiply works just fine. So now I'm gonna copy the layer. So Control A, Control C, I'm gonna hide the layer. And I'm gonna go to the black layer that I created before and create a mask down here. And then I wanna go into the mask where I hold down Alt and left click it. Then I'm gonna paste the shadow pass in the mask with Control Shift V. The reason why I also hold Shift down is that it will paste the image exactly where it was copied from and not based on where your current view in the file is. When that's pasted, I'm gonna Alt click the mask again to go out of it. So now basically what we've done is to create a mask for the black layer only where there is white on the shadow pass, which is all the areas that the light is hitting, which we don't want. We, we only want the shadow parts. So with the mask selected, press Ctrl I to invert it. And now you have the same effect as we had before with the multiply layer, but now it's on a normal layer, which means that you can put the layer on any other blending mode if you want some other type of effect. For example, you can put it on overlay to get this kind of very burned out look. Um, you can change the color of the layer to get different kind of effects as well and just basically play around with different blending modes, um, which gives a lot more options. Uh, I wouldn't use it in the case for this uh, painting because the style is to have these really harsh black shadows but you might find a use case for it. So either of these two methods will work just fine. It all depends what you're looking for and what kind of options that you want to have to play with. And in this case, there's also some parts of the image that I want to be completely unaffected by the shadow. For example, this part in the middle with the entrance of the house, uh, I want to be over the shadow because otherwise it's gonna get completely lost in it. So what I have to do here is to copy those layers that I want on top and put those layers on top of the shadows. So you can see, I've done that for the house and I've done that for some of the characters as well. And, uh, and that's basically it. From here on out, it's only about refining the shadows, editing out where you don't want them, painting in extra shadows where you do want them, and just making them fit to your underlying painting and get rid of that 3D look of it. So yeah, I hope this little tutorial was helpful in the case you want to implement these kind of shadows in your piece. So let me know what you think in the comments and remember to subscribe if you liked it and uh, see you soon.